You may write me down in history with your bitter twisted lies. You may trod me with the very dirt, but still like dust I rise. When I heard this life journey, it very well connected with the poem written by Maya Angelou. Now we're going to meet a person who literally rose from the dust, Mr. Sharad Babu. Sharad was born to a very poor family in a Chennai slum area. And he was brought up by a single mother along with his four siblings in a small hut. His mother was working as midday mill nanny in a small government school with a salary of 30 rupees per month. But she was so determined to educate her all the five children in English medium school. During school days, Sharat along with his sister used to sell idlis to help his mother before going to school. Until 10th grade, he never had a proper electricity in his house. But still, he came up first in 10th and 12th uh, examination marks. He joined Bits Pillani and later he joined the best institution of uh, management institution of India, IIM Ahmedabad. After all this struggle, when he got job with hefty packages, he refused to take them and he started his own company, Food King. In the year 2008, he was awarded Pepsi MTV Youth Icon of India and then CNN IBN uh, Young Indian and he was recognized by World Bank and so on so forth. So many awards he received. When he was selling at least during his school days, his daily sales was 13 rupees. Now his company makes a revenue of 12 crores per annum with 300 employees. So let's meet this lovely, compassionate and inspiring human being, Mr. Sharad Babu, CEO, founder of Food King. So much, please have a seat. Thank you. Thank you so, so much uh, for accepting to do this interview because I never had any recommendations or any reference or we never knew each other. Uh, one fine day I tried to communicate with you and convey my reasons for doing this interview. Thank you for understanding the cause behind it. I would like to start from this one particular question because it always lingers in my mind. Um, when your mother was earning one rupees per day uh, and she had five children and of course there was always a hunger for food would be there. But when did this hunger for marks, hunger for doing well in studies start? At which point it started? It started when I was my first standard. Uh, actually, I was not a you know really studious student during my uh, KGs. Uh, but one thing was going in my mind that always um, uh, you know uh, there is nothing in those classes to talk good about me. So each and every day, whenever uh, you know I I get into the class, I could see that there is a clear difference between me and my classmates in terms of you know the dresses or you know, in terms of their upbringing and things like that. It's a practice that we all share our lunches. So, you know, I could not share my food uh, with my friends. I felt so bad. Yeah. You know, even in lunch, I am not able to, you know, share and get some good... I'm able to even show the food. Show the food. So, that time, you know, I felt very bad that, you know, there is nothing good about myself. So, in my first standard, accidentally I scored first mark in one of the subject. And that time, everyone, uh, you know, uh, was discussing who scored the first mark. And then they said, Shahad Babu is the first mark in this particular subject. And everybody pointed their fingers and spoke about me. So, that's the first time I felt good. And I thought, uh, people are able to recognize me. And people are talking good about me. And also, I had this learning that for food, for dress, for anything else, you know, I, I need to depend on my mother and my mother need uh, money for that. But once I have my books, uh, I don't have to depend on anybody else except my books. So I thought this is my weapon through which I will get <laughs> my recognition. Slowly, I took first mark in all the subjects. Then I became the first ranker in my second standard. So throughout my schooling, I was the first rank student of my class. During school days, what are the challenges that you face, practical challenges, mainly especially due to your economic status? 
challenges as such uh, personally uh, uh, you know only financial challenges i faced and also the stress of you know seeing your mother going through lots of hardships that was also going at the back of my mind oh, okay. because uh, you know i have i i am able to witness that my mother is really slogging out with three to four jobs a week she used to wake up early in the morning cook idlis then uh, ask us to sell those idlis in the street she also sells outside my home also then at 10 o'clock she goes to the balwadi and you know uh, pick picks up the children and go there and teach them then come back in the afternoon again she cooks and you know evening uh, she takes the uh, tuition for uh, uh, kids in the slum who have missed the school oh, okay. so she used to do three jobs a day and during the weekend she used to do uh, you know a helper uh, in the health center so when she is working so hard you know that always gives a stress to me that you know um, that my mother is working really hard for five hours also um, in the school uh, you know even for a test i'll not be able to be having the notebook to write the test okay so i'll be fully prepared but i'll not have the notebook to write the test so uh, like i i feel very bad you know like to go and i cannot write on the bench so <laughs> i need a notebook to write so uh, and also every month or uh, 10th my mother you know uh, like will not be in a position to pay the fees so the class teacher says that whoever uh, didn't pay the fees go and stand outside so i has to be the first guy to go and stand outside then couple of more people will come and you know uh, give company to me first month it was uh, fun but the next month i thought if you keep on standing outside the class for a week and don't focus on your studies uh, then the only recognition you have will go away so i thought what should i do for that because the the distraction for me during that time was my friends sitting inside the class think that it's a privilege and look back and you know and uh, try to pass on words uh, and uh, my schoolmates who are passing through the corridor they used to just discuss why these guys got the punishment so i wanted to go and tell them that i didn't do any mischief yeah those days uh, teacher will make you stand outside if you do any mischief any mischief yes. i want to tell them that my only mistake is i haven't paid my fees for which i am not responsible and uh, i am not at guilty as well neither my teacher nor my mother so it's a situation so then i thought in this situation what should i do i have to be really strong to overcome this so i thought uh, you know i just asked a question people who sit inside and score first rank it is good but when we stand outside and score the first rank we are we can prove ourselves as great and i i said uh, god is giving you a chance to prove that you are great and i said i will prove i am great what should i do for that uh i should not worry about all these distractions i should not worry about the pain in my knees though i stand for a week y- you are standing for a week outside yeah oh until the correspondent comes to the class i have to stand so my only focus is i i told that i should focus on the board you go to school and you stand outside the class the full day for a week stand outside <laughs> then um, and uh, i should focus whether you know i'm able to listen to my teacher or not and i started practicing that very you know under this difficult circumstances so that made me very strong and uh, i i could overcome those uh, challenges apart from that uh, i didn't have much challenge i heard about your uh, uh, challenge of electricity yeah that uh, was like in my slum almost uh, most of the homes didn't have electricity and i didn't feel uh, bad about it but since i was a first rank uh, i struggled a lot to study with a kerosene lamp so sometime i will go outside and uh, i'll study in the street light i used to study with that light positioning my book you know exactly uh, you know like it should fall on my notebook so uh, the, like I, i i was just managing it i didn't feel bad but in my 10th standard i felt the pinch 
because that's the time i was ab like there were lots of distractions age wise and uh, you know also uh, uh, like 10 years you are struggling hard and your mother's income is not increasing the way uh, you know uh, the the um, the fees is increasing also your food requirement is also uh, increasing so i i was literally feeling that pinch that uh, you know um, uh, you, you are not able to manage it so that time i thought i'll give up but something said me in, in before uh, the 10th yeah before the 10th i'll give up and I'll that time even uh, even during 10th you never had electricity at home yeah so i thought uh, you are not able to manage you can be a mediocre student it's very tough or the young you know it's naturally the young boy getting tired of yeah. the, all the stress yeah for so i i got tired i mean i got tired and my distractions so i thought uh, you know uh, i uh, like something said uh, that uh, just imagine what your friends with electricity how they study so when i uh, just imagine that when like what they could see is they could see the calendars they could see the family pictures they could see someone coming in going out um, his or her mother giving coffee booze bone vita so that takes like 5 minutes 10 minutes of their time their yeah, the mother wakes up one hour early yeah <laughs> to 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 prepare them. everything for the kids so that takes some time out of their studies and uh, also they are having the book so i i just imagine my situation my mother is not going to get me coffee or boost or bone vita um, my mother is not so in that sense it is not a disturbance for me and uh, when i study with a kerosene lamp where i try to position according to the flame uh, what i could see is only my book when i look at the roof it is only dark when i look at the side it is dark so i don't have an option but to look at the book you know when i heard this uh, a particular episode of your life in one of your speech i had a strong curiosity you know for a 10th 10th standard boy the thought of being positive stay positive uh, wouldn't come right? how did it, the thought came to your mind that to make that situation of no electricity into positive way of looking at it how did it happen the thing is the pressure on me or the responsibility or the duty that i have to take care of my mother if i don't take care of my mother there is nobody else who is going to take care of her my two younger brothers were not that studious even now. i was studious than my sisters as well so i took the responsibility that if i give up then my family there is nobody else also yes. and also for me that is the only way i could make my mother happy for all her hard work i can't do anything else except to get some good marks get those stars on my rank cards and go and show to her that your hard work is not going waste it's coming you know don't worry i'll take care i wanted to reassure her in the sense i'm realizing now not only i just looked at my mother and you know i was reassuring her in a way that your hard work is not going waste so that that kept me going and also one thing during my 7th standard really changed me in my 4th 5th i used to watch my mother drink water at the end of the day we used to be really hung, hungry at the end of the day so my mother used to cook we used to sit around wait for her to cook the moment she cooks we all uh, you know we all eat and go to bed we go to the mat and sleep and my mother will come after some time and we don't have slept by the time so when she comes and she drinks lots of water i used to think she's really fond of water but in my 7th standard i was a bit matured that time i realized my mother is drinking water not because she is fond of but there is not much food left at the end of the day after we go for second serving you know we all eat all the food all five of us yeah because all teenage kids teenage growing kids. up teenage kids so she don't want to say that no i need some food she don't want to stop us so that's the reason she's drinking water so that time i realized oh, i know how much uh, food is important to anyone i have felt hu- hungry many times so i know how much it pains so i thought my mother is the only person i mean uh, if there is a life on this earth who can sacrifice food for somebody else it could be only mother so that time i realized mother is the greatest living or 
greater than the god there is a saying mata pita guru daiva i realized it uh, practically so from then on i question what am i going to do for her so that made me to have a goal that i should uh, study well go to the best college and then get a good job and then support her i want to take you back to that period after 10th you face some distractions uh, in the schools and almost lost focus from your studies uh, as i heard from your speech uh, would you please talk about that i i didn't lose my focus uh, these were the things that were uh, that was going on my mind on one side uh-huh. on another side i didn't give up on my uh, you know pursuing the studies okay but still these things were going the distractions were like uh, you know to talk to girls you know to chat with them and um, you know dress up Nicely, yeah. uh, dresses, and you know, sh- show off in front of them. So naturally, yeah. comes to the comes to teenage boy. Yeah, teenage boy. Uh, those were the distractions, and um, you know, but uh, since I, I was, um, you know, I was about to take off my focus from my studies, but uh, some, you no, know, luckily I had this intuition and said that don't give up and just focus. Just so sometimes, you know, uh, the hard hard situations make you to distract. so uh, then uh, i didn't give up on that then i finished successfully my 10th standard then uh, to an 11th standard i thought i will not be able to continue because there was a special fees of 4000 something oh okay so yeah. then i thought um, you know uh, my mother will not be in a position to pay that so maybe i have to skip school but uh, i some idea came to my mind this two and a half months uh, can we do some work Uh, and earn and continue so for me i know how to do a book binding mm. so i did book binding i went to my master and said i can do that can you refer parents who want to do book binding for the children and my uh, uh, correspondent referred lots of parents i got some orders and i did book binding and earned some money and then i continued my 11th so 11th went off uh, 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 peacefully okay. then uh, during my 12th uh, we had uh, special classes early in the morning and late evening okay. so we got to wake up early in the morning by 5 o'clock 4 o'clock but i will not be able to wake up because i has to be very tired uh, lack of food was the reason so um, i used to wake up by 6:30 uh, then skip uh, miss the uh, morning classes and get scolding from my correspondent then i go to the school then come back and you know uh, again same thing used to happen then uh, i thought uh, why you are not able to wake up uh, the answer came that you don't have energy how did you get that point that because you don't have energy because i get tired okay so i get tired i go by walk to the school then go to the tuition don't okay, go to the class so i feel tired at the end of the day so that's the reason so i said uh, okay you have certain amount of energy can you increase your energy but already my mother was going through lots of difficulty her uh, pulses in the sambar was reducing <laughs> the sambar is becoming watery and watery so i cannot go and ask her like i am yeah. in 12 give me boost bone you know i cannot ask her so then she is doing the maximum possible for my side maximum side. possible a lady could do uh, cannot do more than this then i thought um, Uh, okay you have a limited energy can you work on the spending of the energy i really love that strategy you know when i heard this uh, your speech my curiosity is again how the 12th uh, 11th standard boy thinking in that sense regarding his energy levels and how, how to calculate his energy where to spend energy it's it's brilliant the thing is i need to prove i need to survive i need to prove to the world i need to take care of my mother i want my mother to stand upright that i worked hard and this is the result what i produced today this is my son who could come up in flying colors i want to show that when that is the focus you know your mind your body your soul everything aligns according to that fantastic so you know um, this limited energy how we are spending was my question so i spend by uh, uh, playing i spend by um, uh, doing little bit of works given by my mother i spend by talking i spend by studying 
So I said, what is your priority right now for <laughs> next one year? Because twelfth is so important. So my priority is studies. So I went to my mother and said, I'm not going to play for next. I mean, I'm not going to do little bit of works you are giving for next six months. Then I told myself, I'm not going to play for six months. Then I told, okay, talking. You are talking thousands and thousands of words. I told myself, I'm not going to talk more than ten words a day. Oh. So within a month, I reduced less than fifty words, and within from next month onwards, you counted all those things. Yeah, I counted my words. Within next month, the second month onwards, I spoke less than ten words a day. Because of that, I had lots of energy. I had lots of time saved because of that. Also, I could understand people when I am silent. Mm. When 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 my batch classmates come and ask uh, some question, have you prepared this topic? I just question: Is this good for your studies? Yes, it is good. And are they asking for competition or are they asking for helping you? If it is helping, I'll answer them. If it is like knowing the competition and to disturb me, I'll not answer them. So everybody <laughs> thought Shahat has become mad. Is not even talking more than three words, four words a day. So what happened to this boy? Suddenly? What happened to this this fellow? You know they wanted to come and ask me and talk about movies and girlfriends, boyfriends. But I I just asked in my mind, is this good? The answer came, it's not good for your goal. Then skip it. Was my answer in my inside my mind. So I continued with my studies like that, and I used to wake up from six thirty. I used to wake up by five o'clock, and I slowly I realized I'm gaining more. But still, my friends used to wake up by morning four o'clock. Mm. So I said, uh, "Why you are not able to wake up? So you are very cozy with your blanket." So I said, "For next six months, I'm not going to use my uh, 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 t-shirt or shirt." I'm not going to use a mat. I'm not going to use a blanket. Only a pillow and the shorts. I'll sleep on the floor by nine o'clock, instructing my mind sleep off, and also I'll instruct my mind wake up in in the morning. So because of the chillness, I used to wake up during midnight, twelve thirty. Okay. And twelve uh, thirty, I'll wake up. I'll say myself, change your place, go sit and study. I used to study from night twelve forty-five, twelve fifty, till morning seven o'clock. I'll instruct my body not to move from that place, and I'll study till morning. You literally instruct your body. Instruct my body. So I think that came uh, because of my uh, earlier days. I used to instruct, don't feel the pain in your knees. When I instruct my knees. It listen because the mind and body is so connected. So connected, and I don't know how this idea came to you, but it's a brilliant idea. Uh, <laughs> I know it rarely comes to people's mind. So then I realized that your mind and body is totally in sync, and you are able to perfectly exactly. manage it. And that's how your mind is able to wake you up by exact whatever time you say. And uh, I felt good. And during twelfth, it was much more uh, very, uh, uh, very difficult in the sense, um, you know, uh, you are seventeen, and um, I had just um, two shirts and one uh, one pant for the entire year. I had just this, and um, I used to have evening classes. You are talking about the uniform or even everything, all included. All included. Oh. Except the uniform. Okay. I had one uniform. I had this dress. So for the evening classes, we got to wear a color dress, uh, not the uniform. Already the uniform also not in good condition. So I used to wear this one shirt today and the next other shirt the next day, and I used to feel very bad. Two shirts wearing it for the whole year. You know what the classmates will think. It's almost like a uniform. Another It's uniform. It's like a, another uniform. and you find your classmates were wearing different dresses and uh, lots of things is whether i'm washing it and wearing it or not these people will think like that but my mother will wash it every day the moment i wear it the next day she'll wash it 
so but uh, you know all these things difficulties were going in my mind but i was focused on my studies because the moment i give up on that there is nothing else i can look look upon so i finished my 12th i got very good marks one of my friends said that uh, if you apply in bits you will get a job for sure it's for the job and the first month salary i worked for all these years so then i thought i should study in bits pilani you started scoring high marks the top mark Uh, but slowly you started looking at you want to increase the margin between the first and your place and the second space how this thought came first because over a period of time i got bored of taking the first mark okay i was losing the motivation so i thought uh, what is the next best way to motivate myself okay. and get go ahead with the crowd so that time i thought it's it's all internal i never said this thing to anybody yes. then i told myself in the the first quarterly if it has like 50 marks difference in total between you and your second rank then in the next test um, you you make sure the total is much more so i kept on increasing the i mean difference between me and my second rank holder so that really kept me going uh, and also that really helped me in my 6th uh, uh, standard i believe you know at one point of time uh, like uh, my class teacher said um, you all uh, bring your test test notes mm. to write your test uh, when you come for the test i went to my mother and asked uh, uh, i need money to buy the notebook mm. some 5 rupees or something like that 5 rupees or 10 rupees my mother was not having that money she didn't have there is no way she don't she never borrows from anyone so she said to me that i don't have that money uh, i had a fight with her like how can i go and write a test without a notebook <laughs> of course 6 year 6 standard boy standard. will do that <laughs> so and it's embarrassing to go to the class without a test notebook and uh, face the students uh, so i went to the class i i, I skipped that test actually i wrote the uh, rest of the seven subject the eighth subject i didn't write so then i compared my marks with total marks with my second rank holder without writing one test the uh, she was just 10 to 15 marks ahead of me yeah, i was patting myself yeah it's i think it's more of uh, it's mostly if you see who will done it it's not about what i understand is that it's, it's not about what uh, uh, other people are telling you or what you father is advising it is not about what your teachers are guiding uh, or, or somebody else is pushing it's mostly about what you're telling about yourself inside yeah. the internal conversation i think is the most powerful conversation that can push somebody up even my mother never said to me that like you study well she never said to any of my brother or my sister so i never had my father's guidance so not even uh, my father said me uh, somehow it's a god's gift that i could talk myself and motivate myself it's purely god's gift let's talk about uh, your period in bitspalani uh, how was the life there there uh, it was miracle you know like for a person who is just earning 1000 rupees a month to put uh, her son into uh, prior the number one private engineering college yeah yeah is a nightmare <laughs> you know we j- i just thought i went to my mother and said uh, i i will get a admission here this is the best college alone in lakhs and all and i want to study here she said uh, okay i don't know how she said that you know uh, she said the end uh, she uh, gave the money for the application so i applied then i got the admission over there for chemical engineering i got it and we didn't we don't have the money apart from that there was a special fees of uh, around another 25000 rupees so first semester we got to pay around 45000 rupees this is almost a four four years salary so uh, she had some savings for as jewels for my sister so she pawned the jewels uh, so that was very little then she took some high interest debt of 10% we made the dd of around 42000 and then uh, in uh, tamil nadu express uh, went from here my mother didn't come me and my brother in law went from here till uh, pilani 
and that was the first time i went there when i went there i thought i'm going to conquer the world as any a student uh, thinks of but when i went stepped in to the gate it was a different thing because my mother was not there all these years my mother was the motivation any time any difficulty i used to look at her hard work and i used to get that energy and i used to you know run but uh, here my mother is not there and i am 2500 kilometers away from my home and uh, um the difference in my school between me and my classmates was this but in the college it was this <laughs> like Here's their the english point. was amazing they are, they they talk very fluent english with so much of accent i sometimes i will not be able to follow them um uh, they talk about things which i never heard of they talk john grisham uh, you know uh, piers brosnan and um, you know i used to think what are these uh, pamela anderson <laughs> i used to think what are these what are they talking about um, then i realized slowly after 6 months or so they are talking about some english novels english movies english actors i born in a slum where there was no electricity i never heard of all of these people i never heard of any movies or novels of english so it was very difficult for me i i could not dwell with them and financially also the the difference was so much my mother used to give just 50 rupees a month which i had to spend for my soap uh, bathing so then uh, 50 rupees uh, per month per month but first month since it was first month i had some good money i mean around 1000 rupees uh, she gave so uh, we used to go for you know uh, like uh, treat uh, every uh, week or every two weeks we used to go and when we all have food in the restaurant i never heard of them all those food so we used to order and eat uh, two of the uh, friends out of 25 people they will say we will pay the bill this time i mean we'll pay the bill so i felt very happy inside me you know uh, oh my god like uh, we eat all kinds of uh, very special food <coughs> and uh, these guys are paying the bills and uh, what kind of place is this very good man very great hearted people so uh, like very nice so next time uh, yes. you know we went for a treat again two more people were uh, paying the bill so then my mind was <laughs> you come to you <laughs> sometime you come to me <laughs> <laughs> the third time they call me i said i'm down with fever i'm not coming i'm not coming they said you can just come no i'm not coming so because of that i could not interact uh, much with my uh, batchmates and my english was also not good so they were not able to you know um, gel with me so but uh, i i cannot give up uh, if i give up all the hard work will go for a toss so i was just continuing with myself and i was very feeling very bad because in my mess in my college i could get good food all three times food but you know um, i was thinking my mother will be starving now but i am able to eat here you know all three times so most of the time i'll not be able to eat well so somehow but i had to continue then my first year gone second year gone i had just one friend uh, like uh, who uh, really guided me i used to say much don't worry things will be all right so in my second year i was part of my chemical engineering department where i used to really work hard in the workshop with the uh, welding mm-hmm. with the cutting so i used to work very hard my none of my classmates can work like me so i realized hard work is your strength these people cannot do that so because of that i got some good name i had friends in my junior batches mm. so because i missed one year making friends in my own batch so i had friends in my junior batch and they were respecting me because of my seniority in the batches mm, yeah. so they didn't mind about my english or my way of dressing or something like that then in the third year uh, they wanted to select coordinator for the apogee which is a chemical engineering Uh, exhibition mm. everybody wanted to uh, contest for that but uh, people said my junior said sharat uh, has to become the coordinator if he is not going to become the coordinator none of us will work for next year 
because they all know that I work really hard compared to anybody else. So um, I was really scared because I had to address the meeting in English, you know, things like that. I said I didn't work for this post, but this post will give you a very good, uh, you know, placement, very good uh, ranking in the okay. uh, campus, one of the top people like that. So um, then I shared this that I got selected uh, as a coordinator. My friend said that you got to, uh, you know, improve your uh, English now, speaking and things like that. So I used to practice in front of the mirror. Mm. How am I going to speak in the next uh, meeting? And also I used to have, sometimes my friend used to sit in the last, uh, even though he's not from my uh, discipline, he will sit in the last and after the meeting, he'll come and give me feedback. Okay. Uh, at this point, you should have spoke like this. In this point, you should have spoke like this. Then I read the uh, books. And um, uh, even a stuck clock shows right time twice in a day. So suddenly I'll say this. <laughs> if I'm stuck with my voc vocabulary. <laughs> so <laughs> everybody will be thinking about stuck clock. <laughs> showing right time twice in a day. By that time, I'll pick up my words and come back to the uh, conversation. <laughs> okay. so that's how I manage. But at the end of six months, everybody said you are a good manager, good leader, and you have a bright future being a manager, being a leader. So that uh, made me to listen to a word called manager first. And they said, manager is one who makes others work and who get paid more. Mm. <laughs> so I thought I need to be a manager. And they said, uh, where should I do this, pursue this? They said, I am the best. And if you do that, you will get one crore as your salary. So I just saw I came here for a few lakhs. They are talking about crows, and my mother is earning just thousand two thousand five hundred rupees a month. Uh, my dream is to give my first month salary. What if I give my first month salary eight lakh thirty three thousand rupees to her? Oh my God, that's like really really good, and she will faint. So I thought I'll give her like some twenty thousand rupees for spending in the supermarket and this and that. And what I will do with th the rest of the money, if I don't spend it in the first month, again, I'll get another 8,33,000 in my account. It's so heavy in my bank account. So I thought I will, uh, uh, first month, I'll get one car in the slum outside the heart. This is, these were your calculations. Eh? I was just dreaming. <laughs> I'll park it on in, my, in the road, I mean, uh, in front of my house. And uh, next month also, I'll get another one car for four, five lakhs. I'll save another three lakhs in my bank account. So in seven months, I'll get seven cars <laughs> in the slum. Anybody who is passing through the slum, they will come and they will see the cars, seven cars. What is this seven cars in the slum, all new cars? And they will say like, you know, this is the fellow and she's the mother. She used to really work hard and made her son to study well. And he went to Bits and IIM and he has become successfully. My school days, childhood days, I thought my ma make my mother proud. I thought this is the way to get that recognition for my mother. So then I was just dreaming I'll come out of my heart with a blazer. There will be a guy in white and white. I'll throw my file. And he'll catch that file and just run behind me. Like movie. But, uh, like movie. By the time I'll go towards the car and I'll open the door of the car and somebody will stop me. So, so don't oh, get into oh this. God. I'll just ask him why. <laughs> this is a Wednesday car. You are getting into a Tuesday car. <laughs> I'll say sorry to him and then I'll get into a you know Wednesday car. So I was just dreaming. <laughs> I didn't finish my engineering. I didn't give my CAT exam. I didn't um, pursue my studies, I didn't sit for placements, but I was dreaming five steps ahead, five years ahead. <laughs> so then I went to uh, Bihar for six months training and that time I read a paper report saying that 30% of uh, Indian population is uh, poor, below poverty line, uh, what means like they go to bed empty stomach. Then I, I connected that with me and my mother and how it paints, not one people, two people, but 30 crore. Oh my God, you are studied, your education is going to help you, you have family, but that's not that, you know, really good. What about these people? Are you going to show a blind eye to them, deaf ear to them? How your education is going to help them? 
So then I thought I should start a company and give jobs. I left all this uh, car dreams. Then I was preparing and I gave the cat. I could not clear. I had nearly one and a half lakh debt with interest. I cannot ask my mother to pay it. So I took a job in Polaris Software in Chennai with 22, 23,000 rupees a month as my salary. I worked a couple of years. Simultaneously, I am preparing for CAT. I gave CAT and I cleared all six IMs the fourth time and I went to IM Ahmedabad. When you were working for two years, yeah. what was the salary you were earning? I was earning 23,000 a month. Okay, that itself is a huge, uh, huge, huge, money, uh, from, huge money for you at uh, that time. Since 2002, yeah. from 1,500, 2,000 rupees, uh, jumping to uh, 23,000 in a family, it's very, very big. That brings a lot of comfortability in yeah. your life. Okay, so comfortability mostly slow down the energy and cool down the fire. Yeah. Those kind of this happens. And then, but you kept on going. Yeah, I kept on going because I, I already dreamed for the car. Yeah, I didn't think about myself. Okay. I thought about uh, lacks of people. Yeah. Yes. So again, yes. Uh, I have to live anyway, up to that. Yes. Yes. Had I not thought about it. I would have cooled down in my software yeah, job. To make and your mother happy, 20,000 is yeah, enough? More than enough and things like that would have carried and I uh, would have lived a normal software professional life. You know, uh, getting a flat, getting a car and it would have been like that. But my dream was to become a manager and you know, start a company. So even CAD preparation was also very, because I was working as well as preparing. Correct, yes. So, you know, you know how difficult, tough, competitive it is. So, I really worked very hard. Uh, I remember on 29th May um, of uh, 2003, I started my preparation. On uh, June 1st, I landed up in IIM Ahmedabad. One year of preparation. preparation. Uh, I used to wake up uh, early in the morning, 5 o'clock. Go to a first uh, coaching at 6 o'clock, 6 to 8 I study, then 8.30 I have some tea and uh, samosa and uh, go to the uh, next uh, coaching from 9 till 12 o'clock, 12 o'clock go to the job, till 9 night I used to work, then 9 I travel back to my home at, till 9.45, I eat, from 10 to 12 I used to study, again sleep from 12 to 5, if it is a night shift, I used to wake up by 12 o'clock and go to the class from morning, I mean afternoon 1 o'clock till night 9 o'clock, I used to prepare, 9 till morning 7 I used to work, yeah. so that used to be the routine. Also whenever I used to uh, ride a bike, so whenever uh, Yamaha bike, so whenever I stop in the signal, there, there was like 2-3 minutes or 2 minutes at least in each signal, around 15 signals you stand and you waste your time. So what I used to do is, I used to pick up the numbers behind the buses, cars, you know, and work out is it divisible by 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, till 30. What is the square root? What is the cube root? What is the square? What is the cube? Practicing your... Practicing <laughs> my cat. I was not dis uh, just uh, wasting that half an hour, you know, or uh, up and down. I was not wasting that time because I was focusing on that. Because this preparation is not only for you, but for lakhs and lakhs of people. I feel like they are all dependent on me and, you know, I need to really work hard and take care of them. And I put myself some pressure on me. And, uh, but what happened is, the paper got leaked. Then I thought, oh my God, the time you have prepared and gave the exam and the paper got leaked. Uh, so then I said, it is not only for you, maybe... Uh, God don't want you to waste one year of your time. So maybe you are not clearing and uh, with two, three marks you are missing. So that is why he uh, leaked the paper and uh, he is making you to write a retest. Another, another chance. Another chance within this year. So <laughs> I was waiting for that retest within uh, 15 days or one month they announced the retest. Everybody will think, there are two ways to think at that moment. Yes. One is to give up, oh my god, one more time. Another is thinking that maybe positively, you don't want to waste your time, just focus one more time. 
no reassuring so by what happened is one week before the fourth time i was down with viral fever so i was very weak and uh, and, and you were alone there i was in chennai uh, oh you were in chennai okay i was really worried also because four times prepared for three years of your lifetime has gone into this and this viral fever of one week is going to take away your three years how is this possible how is this uh, should happen it should not happen so i was just reassuring was keeping my mind cool and i went to the exam hall in an auto i in the exam hall i said listen nobody died because of viral fever you will also not die the maximum will happen is you will faint if you faint what can you do about that you cannot do anything about that so why do you worry about that you worry about the exam let others worry about your viral fever two hours i just focused on my exam i cleared all six iams in the first round then uh, i went to the gdpi uh, amdabad and calcutta the top two yes i gave bangalore uh, normally but amdabad and calcutta again i was down with fever but i told in the other way a while we were so lucky <laughs> you got through the exam first you got through exam again you are having a viral fever you are going to definitely clear calcutta and amdabad the idea is i don't want to miss the number one institute exactly so i f- train my mind to focus to clear this i uh, saying positively that with viral fever it's lucky you'll clear i cleared all six and i chose in am amdabad and went there with the sole purpose that i have to start a company after all this struggle you know you might have got hefty salary jobs after i am amdabad education you know you had the guts to say no and you decided to start up your own um my on one side my personal uh, requirement i mean we were in the heart only we just had the heart and uh, i told my mother like after this i'll come and you know earn really really good salary and you know it's going to be really uh, good life after this yes. because i had to like within two and a half years i left my software job saved some money gave it to my mother to ta- take care for the next two years came back here and i said after this i'll come back and work but some of my dream of you know starting a company and giving jobs to people that was also on the other side so i had uh, like the guts to say that okay it's going to be another one year of tough time after that you will be successful i had that confidence and also i went and told my mother like please bear for another one year <laughs> so what did she say she didn't say she always supported me she's a a rock star lady <laughs> she never say no to whatever she don't know what is bits but still she supported me she don't know what is i am but still she supported me so she thinks that whatever decision i take will be right decision and she supported me so she just kept quiet and she is not a greedy lady uh, or going behind money or she is not afraid of difficulties so she said fine and i got my first job then i came back to the campus and i was started my business right from the campus so i used to get burgers and uh, fruity and chocolates and pastries and after placement presentation the students get free snacks mm-hmm. so i uh, started supplying that snacks oh, okay and got the money from the placement people i mean the company people okay so it all started with uh, 2000 rupees and uh, within 10 15 days i made uh, uh, maybe i don't exactly remember but definitely around a lakh i made as profit profit yeah only for the snack supply snack supply wow okay so from then on i you know uh, that opportunity was gone because placements are over then uh, the convocation uh, was there so i took my mother from chennai to amdabad in a flight and i she was seated in the audience and uh, you know in the convocation uh, the, the inauguration 
of the company just one day before the convocation narayan murthy sir only inaugurated okay so that time he gave a speech and said very good very wonderful like that he inaugurated your company company okay and my friends as well okay so that time they said do you want to speak for a couple of minutes till then nobody knows anything about me ah so in i am in i am nobody knows so that the first time i just told uh, i don't want to take the credit that guiltiness made me to speak because i don't want to take the entire credit of you know starting the company but it's only my mother whose entire sacrifice and hard work brought me from chennai slum to i am amdabad and starting a company so i want to make my mother uh, happy proud so i told I, just because i'm a bitspilani graduate or a polaris employee i have started this company i'm able to come up to this level it's only because of my balwadi amma who started with 1 rupee i could come to the stage so i want to ask her to come in front of the you know and inaugurate participate in the inauguration function okay so that time there were like 100 medias i never realized all those things and people carried the article and that became a huge i mean indian campus entrepreneurship started from there became a trend from there starting a company right from the campus it was talked about in all the campuses and uh, you kept the name food king yeah okay I kept the name Food King. First, I didn't have a name for my company, <laughs> and uh, because we just uh, outsourced from the various McDonald and this and that, and gave the and the company people wanted bill. Okay. So then um, they they wanted a bill, and I wanted to have a name. So life is one. Why become king of just one product? Become the king of food. So Food King is a company name. <laughs> That's how I started it. Okay. and from there on uh, how was it travel if you... all my friends uh, went outside the campus and uh, i was the only guy left in the campus uh, from my batch i had some more time to stay in the hostel like everybody had but uh, everybody left at so that time um, i went around nearly 20 25 companies and everybody wanted to see who am i so <laughs> but giving a project is much more than that so they said that well, do you have experience and things like i said i don't have any work experience i mean business experience in this field i managed the mess of uh, i'm on the but that's it but on the business side i i, I haven't done uh, literally so then um, there was one software company uh, like hr nidhi sharma ma'am mm. she was ready to give a project but she felt very bad uh, i mean so awkward uh, giving the project because she said that uh, i can give you the project but the project is very small uh, it is supplying tea and coffee uh, we have 100 employees and the company name is system plus 100 employees you have to supply tea and coffee uh, 80 tea and 20 coffee for around 3 rupees uh, one cup so <laughs> she said that uh, like you, as you said on one side you can get uh, 2 lakhs a month on another side you have to start with 300 <laughs> rupees as a revenue per day so i said to myself you have to you can start as small as possible but you have to reach as high as possible so i told um, ego you go i don't care it's okay you start with t doesn't matter so i said i'll take up the project ma'am the thing is next company which asked me do you have an experience i i don't have an answer no i have an answer yes fantastic yes and uh, now you have approximately around say six units yeah how many cities you have right now i have in uh, rajasthan delhi then i have in erode Ra- rasipuram i have in chennai i have in goa all these cities i have you know when i was looking at the numbers uh, when you were selling idlis during your childhood days your daily revenue was 13 rupees uh, but now your company makes annual turnover of 12 crores how many employees you started uh, with first i was the only employee i okay. mean i was just working myself for a couple of uh, orders cooking also 
No, there is there was no cooking. Okay. I just outsourced. Okay. Then I started from a hostel room. So after that, uh, I could not manage alone because I got to go out, get the burgers uh, hot just after, before Delivery, the uh, meeting and uh, put it on the table and, uh, you know, also manage the fruity and this and plates. and So I wanted to time it well. So I took a part-time guy mm. and uh, he was uh, in the company. So that part-time guy was the first employee. So today we are our, have around 300 employees in our company. And uh, it's a pretty long journey uh, from there to here. But still we could have done a lot better. But I was uh, into uh, uh, giving speeches as a motivational speaker. Okay. Uh, the idea was again, uh, uh, the problem is so big, 30 crore people. I just looked at lots of entrepreneurs. They have developed in a big way. Good. But I felt they could have helped others to develop as well uh, but I didn't find many or I didn't find very few also they all want to develop they want to grow big they want to grow big till they are 60 65 then they look at the society and want to do a little bit of charity works here and there but myself I said I don't want to waste 30 40 years just to grow big and then look at the small kids at that point of time and say I'm, I'm coming now I want to develop you all guys. I don't want to do that. I want to develop when I am developing. So with that motivation, I started addressing lots of uh, students, youngsters. So far, I've mentored more than 500 young entrepreneurs. I've guided them. They're all successful. I've individually career counseled a few thousands of uh, people. They're all successful after taking my advice. So, enormous change in their career and life. And uh, I've addressed more than 15 lakh people in around 1,500 functions. The maximum I addressed was 42,000 at one, one point. Wow, wow, that's a huge crowd. So I've traveled uh, across India and, and enormously in Tamil Nadu as well as abroad as well. So I've traveled. I think this is uh, in sync with your, uh, the trust that you've started. Yeah. Yeah. Because uh, say I'm able to employ say a few thousands of people. Or few, I mean, uh, my dream is to lack, employ a lack of people in my lifetime. But if I motivate other youngsters, when I am young, if they start with 10 employees, they are also going to employ a few hundred. It's like multiplying your dream. And if you have few thousands of youngsters coming out like this, you are employing 1000 into 10, which is like 10,000 people. If they are going to employ on an average 100 people, then it's like 1000 into 100, around a lakh of people. Exactly. So it's like multiplying. At the end of the day, your ultimate goal is to help the people. So I, even though it takes lots of time, but I made a commitment that I, I will do it. Doesn't matter you lose few crores of turnover in your company, but somebody else's money doesn't matter. It's a, value that ultimately comes to the country, which matters. I started my life with, uh, I needed recognition from people. I got more than 70 awards and titles so far. I never longed for it. Because you deserve it. During your business uh, life, was there any situation where there was, you know, so much of failure, okay. you know, there is, there is no way to go, what to do next, shall I close this? Or should I carry on? Did you face any kind of situation like yeah. that? Yeah. At the end of uh, six to eight months, almost all the uh, friends have joined the company and they are like very successful. And I was still in Ahmedabad. I was running few projects. I was making money, but I was not making money to repay my debt as well as making profit. Because I saw young entrepreneur, they all want ch cheap from you lesser price compared to any established player mm. and even your employees want more salary compared to any established companies so nobody wants to give you credit so and nobody uh, wants to give you a loan as well everybody else wants credit because you are a new company so in this situation um, I, I wanted I realized that I needed a big project volume is the key so I heard that there is an alumni meet in Mumbai 
So a big guy is coming there, one of my alumni who is running a big company with few thousands of people and that company is in Ahmedabad. So I went there to meet him with no money, like I just had some 200 rupees with me in Mumbai city, you can imagine like 200 rupees in Mumbai city. I just planned very perfect that I'm going to go there, attend the meeting and uh, I'm just going to have some tea and samosa, something like that. I'm going to come back in the overnight. I mean, dinner I'll have in the meat and I'll, I'll board the train and come back. But unfortunately, Mumbai traffic, I could not reach there on time. And by the time I reached and I, I came back to the railway station, the train departed. So I didn't have money to, for my return ticket as well. I didn't have money to stay anywhere. So I don't want to disturb anybody, you know, I, I needed to stay and at that time, night, night, 10 o'clock like that. So what I thought, um, I had 200 rupees, the return ticket was 350 rupees something. So <laughs> I thought, okay, I'll get refund of my ticket, around 200 rupees I'll get. So 400 rupees I'll have, 350 I'll take the return ticket and 50 rupees I'll have tea and samosa. So I thought I'll sleep on the platform. I went and slept on the platform, but the railway police just told everybody to get out. So I was also one of them having my bag and I was just thinking, six months before, if you have taken a decision to join a company, your life will be like something different. You have taken a different route and you are You're on the road this extreme now. in this extreme now. <laughs> you want to continue or you want to give up? So that was in my mind at that day. So slowly, uh, one by one, went in to the railway station after some time. So like all of us, around few hundreds of people got in. Uh, we went to the platform and that waiting hall, you know. I was really disturbed. I know manageable Hindi. So I, I wanted to talk to someone. So there was a fellow platform guy. I was just telling about myself my dream and saying that uh, <laughs> I, uh, just uh, due to my <laughs> I'm here <laughs> like that I was just consoling myself <laughs> by talking to him uh, motivating or uh, not motivating consoling just, just venting out yeah venting out because it's very difficult you know like after I am on the bus sleeping on a platform is not easy so then after a few minutes he listened to me and he offered me newspaper and he said, Thik hai, thik hai, aap so jai. He said, I had my bag as my pillow. I put that paper and I, I just lie down. I said to myself that you're not the only guy to sleep on this platform. There are a few hundreds of people. You have started this venture to support these people. So let all these people get on to their homes. Then you worry about yourself sleeping on the platform. And uh, if you give up, you are saying that you are a failure. The business idea is not a failure. You are not able to manage, you are not able to get some good project. You cannot be a failure. So continue, make some changes. So I came back, I made lots of changes. I closed on my office. I made my outlet as my office. So I reduced my expenses, expenses. overheads. Then I said, uh, no centralized cooking, I decentralized. Lots of changes I did. I reduced the losses, every month losses. Then I got a, a good project uh, in um, Rajasthan. So I took that project and slowly things changed. So that, that the lowest point in your business uh, yeah. gave you triggered to look at the process or the entire the, the way you are doing things. We really appreciate uh, the way uh, you took up the new foundation which is with the motto of Hunger Free India. The strategy that you have adopted, you started motivating different people and uh, encouraging other uh, entrepreneurs to come up. I think with that strategy you will be able to see the Hunger Free India in your lifetime. I wish and we pray for it. And uh, anything at all, uh, myself and uh, the audience who is listening to this interview, if they can make any changes in their life and then grow further, 
even one person do that and that could be the success of this interview. Thank you so much 